Hello, Geekscapists. This is William Bibiani reporting to you live via recorded video from Comic Con 2010. And I am here with writer, director, star, artist Larry Blemeyer. I think I got that right. You got it right, and, and you included almost everything that I do. Oh my God, what I miss? No, I'm sure plenty of things. Plenty of things. Okay. You, 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 you clean up around did the house, etc. Did you say actor? I did. I think I said actor. Did I say actor? actor? Well, you said star. So. I said star. You yeah. are a star. All right, star is fine too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're here, and he's of course uh, the the auteur wunderkind of Lost Skeleton of Cadavera, and he's coming out with uh, a couple movies in the Shout Factory. Lost Skeleton returns again. Yep. And uh, Dark and Stormy Night. Dark and Stormy Night. Yeah. Both uh, Shout is uh, uh, putting both of them out uh, August seventeenth. is a street date. Now, the one movie that I'm, I'm seeing absent from here and that was promised in Lost Skeleton was, of course, Trail of the Screaming Forehead. I tell people, uh, please be patient. We're being patient. Trail of the Screaming Forehead, I believe, will finally emerge and uh, is in process, but um, I can't tell you anything more than that right now. Well, for people who are excited about the Lost Skeleton sequel, uh, since Trail was mentioned in the credits of the first Lost Skeleton, are we missing something? Is there like a sequel being skipped, or will they be able to go right into the Lost Skeleton 2 and feel right at home? No, there's nothing missing. Uh, I think you'll feel like, uh, in fact, Lost Skeleton 2 you can even enjoy if you haven't seen the first movie pretty much. Uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, it goes, no, it goes directly into it. There's been a two-year gap, of course, uh, between the end of Lost Skeleton Cadaver and the beginning of Lost Skeleton Returns again. There's been two years since then where uh, Dr. Paul Armstrong has been lost in the jungle and become a, a raging alcoholic. Is there going to be a Dr. Armstrong, I presume, moment? Um, there is a moment, it's not quite, uh, I presume, but uh, I won't say anything more like that, but it's a, it's a moment, moment that seems to be getting a nice reaction from, the, from viewers so far. Now, the Lost Skeleton movies and, and uh, all these other, they're, they're, they're very much based on an, an older style of film, specifically the 1950s sci-fi in the case of Lost Skeletons, but there aren't terribly many sequels to those. I'm thinking of like War of the Colossal Beast and not a lot. Well, how did you go about coming up with a sequel to movies that didn't get a lot of sequels? I don't like sequels, and I... I <clears throat> People had asked me if there would be a sequel to Cadaver, and I always kind of, you know, shake my head. And I hadn't really thought about um, doing it uh, for maybe, you know, several years or so, if at all. But, because to me, with a sequel, there's got to be an idea. There's got to be something that that brings something new to the table and makes it makes it different. I don't like sequels that repeat jokes from the first movie or just repeat the first movie. Or um, and so. There was a conscious effort to um, to make it quite a bit different. It's more of a jungle adventure. Um, there's color in it. I won't say any more than that. Uh, but it's not just black and white. And um, and it's like a movie with a. Uh, it's a spoof of a movie with a bigger budget in a way. Wow. Uh, and frankly, the idea came to me while watching some old um, jungle adventure on TV. Um, and that was what put the spark in my head. Before that, I hadn't really thought about doing a sequel. The one thing I really liked about Lost Skeleton was that on the surface, it's a rather obvious joke. Oh, it's a bad movie. But under that, it's, it's actually a little more complicated because every character isn't just playing a bad character. They're playing an actor acting badly. And you can tell that there's like another story going on behind the scenes. Are you continuing that with Dark and Stormy Night and Lost Skeleton too? Um, you know, not so much in Dark and Stormy Night. I think that we wanted to be... Lost Skeleton of Cadaver was a spoof of essentially a bad movie. And, and hopefully a, a good-natured one. Dark and Stormy Night is actually not a spoof of a bad movie. It's a spoof of an old movie, of a, of a genre that could be, they were, some were bad. I mean, these are old Dark House movies we're talking about. Right. They made a ton of them. Some were bad, some were good, some were very cheap, and some had, had a budget and stars. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a, a different thing for the actors. They're adapting um, uh, parts that were um, archetype in... in in these type of movies, the old Dark House movies. So it's different from Cadavera where, for instance, Dan Conroy says that, I guess I, I, I my direction to him when he played um, Ranger Brad was that uh, you're the actor who was hired because he happened to have a Ranger suit. So the cast was aware that they were playing actors who were playing these roles. And uh, for a while we actually, you know, entertained the idea of trying to put it over as a, as a found movie, a lost movie found, which... Mm -hmm. Which, you know, you can only carry so far. We didn't carry that very far because with the internet, that's you know, yeah. You, can, you couldn't have you couldn't yeah. have fooled anyone really. Would have just been. Um, 
So, so for Lost Skeleton 2, are they going to be playing the same actors returning to those roles? Yeah, uh, shamelessly, because um, they're not only, you know, not only is the cast returning, but even the dead members of the cast are returning. Um, and the way to do that was to bring them back as the twin of the person that died in the first movie. <laughs> Yeah, and so two of them come back as twins, and uh, it's you know again a ridiculous thing to do, and that's why we did it. It's it's fantastic. Now, one other project I think a lot of people have always been excited for from you, and I'm, I, I think I just heard someone else interview about it as well. But uh, Steam War, look, we saw all the images; they looked really cool. Is what is going on with Steam War? S- Steam War is I've been developing for years. It's a pet project of mine, and uh, it's very much different from the stuff that we've done. It's a uh, um, a big action adventure sci-fi epic set in the 1890s it's it kind of it, there's a steampunk element to it although i had developed it for years before i'd even heard the term steampunk um and it's it's a very uh, gritty and swashbuckling adventure which i think is the kind of thing you know we need uh, we need more of um i miss I, I don't think there's a lot of good action on the screen these days so it's certainly not in that fun level is either taking yourself too seriously or it's all special effects driven mm-hmm. yeah definitely uh you follow the three heroes through this movie, and it's kind of they're kind of like the guys from Gunga Din or the Three Musketeers. They kind of screw up, and and uh, and yet fun-loving, they, mischief-making heroes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And yet they 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 manage to keep saving the day. And uh, every time they destroy one of their steam rigs, they get um, uh, elevated to a, a larger classification of rig. Part of the fun with Steam Wars for me is classifications because you. Mm. You know, these are machines, fighting machines that come in all different sizes. They have all different size crews. It's low tech. It's down and dirty. I call it blue collar sci fi because yeah. it's just it's rusty rivets, bolts, yeah. and coal. A lot of coal. What what are, what are your giant robot influences on that? Were you a BattleTech fan, a RoboTech fan? No, no, not really. Um, and 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 I want to just make make it clear they're actually not robots, even oh. though they, they seem to be giant robots. They're actually machines driven by a crew. For instance, this Touché. Is, you know, with um, with the largest. Um, it's terrible. With the largest rigs, you know, you got a 180 foot high rig. That was really. I, can't I know. I that. look at a geek's game, and I fuck that. I'm. Uh, why? That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> so anyway, they uh, just just go on. Let's go on. Let's let's, let's just let's get pretend past. that get, the internet will forgive. Want to get past this Please. whole ugly thing? God damn it! Um, God damn it! The internet Larry. always forgives. Yeah. So uh, you get to see throughout the Steam Wars uh, story, throughout the adventure, you get to see different classifications of, of, of these steam rigs. Mm. Um, and, you know, the United States is fighting Prussia. I picked Prussia because I don't think it can really offend anyone these days. Yeah. Um, and so that's the, that Prussia, that'll be the new heavy for, in film from now on. Like Prussians, it. the new heavy. Yeah. Um, and, what uh, makes the Prussians so bad? Are, uh, they, are they committing... Genocide, they, something. You know what? You know what? You know. Essentially, they're 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 uh, retro Nazis. I mean, kind of. Oh. You know, that's what. That's what. So, they're, so they're killing everyone, but they're old timey about it. Right. Okay. Right. Very old timey. Yeah. And they're developing a secret weapon. And the Americans, the heroes in uh, in Steam Wars, um, are uh, trying to to find out what that is, and they're they're trying to survive. And every time they they take out a steam rig, it gets destroyed, and they get elevated to they get. Um, Promoted to yeah. to a higher class of, of vehicle. That way, we get to see all these different classifications and stuff, which to me is fun. That that is fun. And is there any movement on that? Or can we can we I, have time finally, to finally? You know, I've been developing it over the years with with lots of lots of graphics and stuff, and the website is pretty rich with with stuff like that and details. But I finally did the script uh, a few months ago, so we're just starting to get that out there now. And okay. we're also looking into the gaming possibilities because uh, you know it could end up starting as a game. And then, then becoming a movie. Although movies, you know, the ultimate for me. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much. Cool. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Uh, Lost Skeleton Two and Dark and Stormy Night from Shot Factory. Check it out. William Bibiani from Geekscape.net.